All right, let's move now to the Eastern Cape. President Cyril Ramaphosa was in Kabecha today. You'll know, of course, that the Nelson Mandela Bay metro is facing an extreme water crisis, trying to stave off day zero. So he chose to spend his day there. Of course, he was asked a number of important questions, issues facing our country as a whole. And our reporter, Linda Kuklik, joins us now. Lindo, thank you very much for joining us. So the president obviously was focusing his Mandela Day efforts on trying to help regarding the water crisis. There's a lot underway in the city, which I know you're going to get to in the moment. But obviously, journalists such as yourself took the opportunity to ask really important questions around what's going on with our energy crisis and so on. What answers did you get from him? Well, the president was in Eastern Cape for Mandela Day today, but of course, with an opportunity presented to ourselves, we were able to ask some of the things that we've been seeing culminating as issues in the country. I mean, we spoke about the energy crisis that the country currently faces as far as ESCOM is concerned, and the consistent or the lack of a consistent electricity supply, load shedding being at the forefront. But we also spoke to the president about issues that are pertaining to, you know, the violence we've been see seeing in our communities, the shootings that are happening, including in taverns, and those are some of the questions he was very happy to indulge us about. And one of the issues that he spoke about was the issue of electricity, it's speaking to about ESCOM, saying that he's had a trip there, he has been engaging on high-level engagements with some of those that are within uh, the, 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 that power utility, and he's basically saying that in a matter of days, in a number of days, he will then be able to, in fact, tell us in terms of what the plans are to mitigate as well as to intervene as far as the electricity con issues are concerned. So he did say that there is, in fact, a, somewhat of a family meeting or an address that we should be looking out for, where he will be addressing those issues. He did not give us timelines, but the way he spoke, you could get a sense that soon enough they'll be giving us uh, some plans and, uh, and interventions in terms of how we solve this. But in terms of taverns, he is saying that uh, police law enforcement are, in fact, on the ground. They are trying to get a sense, really, as well as a pulse in terms of where these violence are coming from, violent incidents that we've been seeing, people in their numbers being shot at, uh, patrons as well as, you know, other people that are attending these particular taverns, they have been killed. So it's, it just says that he did notice that there's an escalating issue when it comes to violence uh, among our communities. And that is something that uh, law enforcement is looking quite close to. So the promise there is that all of these issues that we've raised, they are being attended to by government. And soon enough, we'll be hearing about some of the interventions that will be there. But today, he spent a day in one of the troubled municipalities here in Eastern Cape, that is Nelson Mandela Bay. He was looking at the issue of this particular struggling municipality as far as drought is concerned, saying that for about seven years they have been dealing with the issue of drought and uh, he's here to look at some of the interventions that have been put in place. We do understand that close to a billion has been spent in terms of some of the uh, waste plants, uh, water plants, but he basically says that uh, there needs to be a buy-in, there needs to be, uh, you know, some activism as well as some volunteerism that is coming from our community is first in terms of uh, saving water, but also he says that Nelson Mandela Bay residents and in fact across the country must be then able to protect some of the water sources that they have around these areas to make sure that they are able to successfully avert day one, which is uh, day zero rather, which is something that they've been trying to avert for a long time, making sure that taps do not run dry in this municipality or anywhere in the country. Let's take a listen to the president, just giving us a sense really of how he spent the day, but also what are some of the interventions he's been able to observe in his trip to Kebeka today. So it's been a wonderful day. We started off at the waterworks where we saw how the National Department of Water and Sanitation and the provincial government and the metro are working together to address the water challenge and crisis that persists here. And I was very impressed with the work that they are doing. In terms of pushing back the zero day and making sure that they, they, they campaign amongst our people to conserve water, to stop the leaks and uh, to make sure that we, we do add to the resources of water uh, in this metro here. The steps that are being taken are quite uh, impactful and I do believe that we will continue to push back day zero up to the point where we will no longer really uh, need to talk about water shortage here. Of course, 
The drought that has uh, persisted for seven years has just made things worse. And the climate change is having an adverse effect also here in this province. And government is therefore taking steps at all levels to address these challenges. Yeah, give us a bit more detail on the, the bigger climate change commitment because we know it's crucial for example to lessen our dependence on dirty forms of energy such as coal but there's a big framework that's starting to emerge on this what did he tell you today we do understand, Sally, that there is a climate change uh, committee from the president's office uh, that is, in fact, working with some of those that are at national government, such as ministers, but it's essentially looking at ways in which to be proactive in terms of the approach, because we have been told several times by ministers, including Dr. Nkosa Zanatamini Zuma of Kokta. Today we spoke to Senzo Mtunu as well, Minister of Water and Sanitation. They're all singing them, say, the same tune, to, to saying that at the end of the day, what they are expecting is that the issues of drought, issues that are caused by climate change will continue to persist uh, in terms of what we are seeing right now. They are saying that they are going to be uh, emerging more troublesome in the future, but they are looking at some of the ways in which they can deal with the change that is then predicted as well as uh, projected as far as the years are to come. So we do understand there's a committee that is looking at that. They did say that on a global scale, they are also part of those that have committed to ensuring that they lessen you know, issues of uh, climate damage as much as they possibly can. But at the end of the day, uh, one of the other things that have been contributing quite greatly to issues around Nelson Mandela Bay and them reaching day zero, uh, you know, are raising concerns about how governance as well as maintenance around some of the infrastructure, you know, has been happening. Because Minister Senzo Mtunu did recall that in this particular area alone, just a couple of weeks ago, they had about 3,000 leakages and that was causing them 81 million liters per day that has just been going to waste. So those are some of the things they are focusing on but President Cyril Ramaphosa says on a bigger scale South Africa is trying to preempt and project just how much the damage will be as far as climate change is concerned but they are also saying that while they are working on reducing this they're also trying to prepare as a country in terms of what needs to happen to mitigate against those challenges that will then be brought forth by issues like drought and issues of floods that are happening that we've been seeing in the western side of Eastern Cape as well as in KwaZulu Natal but he essentially tells us that they are in fact serious about this they are looking at issues of climate change and what they are essentially trying to do is find those methods and those ways in which they can make sure that people are not adversely affected they are not looking at day zero and all sorts of things that we've been seeing in Nelson Mandela Bay take a listen to the president just giving us some sense as well in terms of those climate change intervention plans that they have as well as programs that they have to make sure that people are not that they are not affected as we've seen some of the residents of Nelson Mandela Bay so climate change is here and as a country we have made certain commitments at a global level that we are going to address climate change and we've got a full program we've got a framework and we are addressing it at a number of levels firstly in terms of energy because climate change is actually caused by the emissions the climate damage that has been done by emissions but largely emissions that have been caused by northern economy countries and we are now getting the consequences here so we have however to address the issue of our own emissions and bring emissions down so that the temperatures can also come down we also have to address climate change in terms of infrastructure the infrastructure that we put in place but we also have to address it in terms of water resources. The water resources in our country, being a drought-stricken country or a country that is challenged when it comes to water, we've got to conserve our water and make sure that we have water resources because water is life. So we are not being reactive, we are also being proactive on a number of fronts. And we are doing a lot of uh, initiatives and we set up the Presidential Climate Change Commission that is doing a lot of work.